friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma, if you don't know me already, I make houseplanty content all over the internet. So if you like houseplants, want to follow my journey, and maybe learn a little something, watch more of my videos. It has been a minute, friends. I am so sorry that I had to take some time off. Um, we had some COVID issues in our household, so recovering from those nicely, but that means that I wasn't able to make a video last week. But I'm back, I'm here, I'm feeling okay, a bit tired, but life goes on and it's time to talk about predatory mites. I know it sounds a bit scary. Why would I introduce more bugs into my home? If I already got bugs in my home because of my plants, why would I put more in? That's kind of how I was feeling as well. I was a bit apprehensive over the whole predatory mites thing, but it turns out they're a really effective way to control and prevent pest outbreaks in your houseplants in a sort of natural and non-chemical way, which is really good because a lot of the other methods that I have found worked for preventing pests have been a bit more chemical. And that's not always ideal for everyone and it's not always like pet safe or kid safe and stuff like that. So it's a really great natural way to prevent and control pests. Really quick, before I get into like more information about predatory mites, I just wanna say if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up down below. Leave a comment on whether or not you've tried predatory mites before. I'm curious, I wanna know how many of you have actually had success with them because I don't think that many plant parents use them. I could be wrong, but prove me wrong down in the comments. And subscribe for more, let's get into it. So first off, what are predatory mites? Like I said earlier, they're used to control houseplant pests. Most commonly, I think, are thrips and spider mites. Those are the ones that I have tried in the past few months and I have had decent success with. But you can also get ones that control white flies, scale, I think even mealybugs or something. But do keep in mind that not all predatory mites work for all of the different types of pests. So you will have to tailor your predatory mites to be the pest that you're experiencing or you're trying to prevent. This is a pest that I'm trying to prevent getting in my videos. Call them the predatory mites. I'm gonna have to kick you off. Predatory mites are not actually insects. They are more closely related to spiders in the arachnid family. I don't know how bug science works, but they're all bugs in my brain. But the ones I have tried, they're very, very small little creatures. They're maybe a little bit bigger than spider mites, not that much. They're quite tiny and like you wouldn't, you wouldn't really notice them unless you're like really looking for them, which I kind of liked. It wasn't like very obvious bug in my house, but they can move faster than their prey, which helps break the cycle and helps them get their targets, get all the pests out of your plants, get them all gobbled up by the predatory mites. So how do they work? They work by eating multiple stages of the pests that you're trying to prevent. For spider mites, they'll eat all stages from egg to larvae to adults, and in thrips, they'll eat the like egg and larvae stages, and this basically breaks up the like life cycle of the pest. That break in the cycle, if you keep taking advantage of that, eventually they'll all get eaten up, No, nothing will be able to lay eggs, and the population of pests will decrease and go away, which is what we want. In spider mites, they can typically consume about seven adults a day, or like 20 larvae, or like 25 eggs. So if you've caught it early, or you're just trying to prevent pests, that can really be the saving grace in keeping your houseplant like happy and healthy and pest free. Adult female predatory mites will lay about 50 to 60 eggs a day, and within about 10 days, all of those eggs will then be adult predatory mites. And that's great because this is actually a faster life cycle than spider mites as well. So it really helps, it, ju it just works to break that, break the cycle off and really get it gone before it becomes too much of a problem. So there are two ways you can use predatory mites. You can use them preventatively uh, before any signs of pests are present or you can use them in a more curative way after you've noticed signs of infestation and work on controlling the problem instead of preventing it. I personally think it's probably better to work preventatively because if you don't have the problem in the first place, then you won't need to control it later. So it's ideal to introduce predatory mites into your collection before you notice any signs of pests, before you see any pests or any like damage on the leaves or anything. That is the best way to do it because then if any pests pop up, they will eat them and then your problem will be solved before it gets into a harmful stage for your plants. 
In order to prevent infestations, you're probably going to get something like these little sachets. And within each sachet, there's about a 750 adult predatory mites. So those will slowly trickle out of the tiny little hole in the top of the sachet and climb out all over your plants and basically hunt down any sort of pests that are on your plants. So it's suggested to use one to two sachets per meter of plant. If you've got a really big plant, you might need two or three sachets, but I mostly use them in the IKEA cabinet, which is a perfect place because it's more of a closed environment. I can really deal with the population growth of pests quickly because it's all inside this thing. So in the cabinet, I think I have two or three sachets just to make sure that I get good coverage throughout. So when you're using predatory mites as a preventatory thing, you'll likely use them in sort of sachets like this, you can see there. These are foil sachets from Dragonfly LTD. I think there's paper sachets as well, but I've heard they're not as, they're not as like waterproof or whatever. So foil sachets are great. Inside of each sachet, there's about 750 adult predatory mites. So that will really, sort your problem out if you're having them and the sachet will release the pests over like a three to four week period and then after that period you'll have to replace the sachets so it's definitely a bit of a process kind of doing it on a monthly basis would be good to keep your collection like happy and healthy and pest free and unfortunately you would have to keep ordering them monthly because they can't be stored it is a live thing so basically want to use them right away after they've been sent to you. It's probably the easiest way to do it and they weren't all that expensive. I'll put the prices up here. They're pretty reasonably priced but it is money so but honestly if you have a big collection with lots and lots of plants and some of those plants might be expensive, spending a few pounds every month to make sure you're adequately covered and able to prevent pest outbreaks it's probably worth it. It's just like an insurance policy. It's like, it just helps protect them. If you already have a pest infestation, you might want to have a more curative solution to your problem to really get rid of those pests. And you could use sachets like this if the infestation's not huge, but if it is getting bigger, you can also buy them loose in bottles and you can basically instantly release them onto the plants instead of them slowly trickling out through the sachets. Again, when you get the bottle, you need to use them all right away. They can't be stored. So I would really only get a bottle if you really have a pest problem because you can't just like close it up and put it away for later when you have a pest problem, you need to use them now. But this will start to control the population of your pest in like seven to 10 days. It takes a minute. It's not the fastest thing. It is a natural process. So it will take a minute and it's not necessarily going to be cured in that time, so you might need to repeat application. But if you do have an infestation, it'll slowly work its magic. But it's not magic, it's science, it's great. One thing to know if you're interested in getting some predatory mites for any reason, you want to make sure that you haven't used sort of chemical pesticides in the last two weeks because they can still affect the population of the predatory mites. Chemical pesticides will kill them as well. They won't just kill the bad stuff. So you really wanna wait two weeks before introducing predatory mites into your collection if you've been using chemical pesticides like Bravanto. If you use SB Invigorator, I think they say two days. So if that's your vibe, you have a little bit more leeway, but even still just avoid chemical pesticides altogether because they don't mix well with predatory mites. It's like a one or the other kind of thing. So the two specific types that I've used, I've written them down because God, I can't remember this. Amblyseus californicus spictal ultimite, which I use to prevent spider mites, and Amblyseus swirskii ultimite to prevent thrips. So those I actually got from Dragonfly LTD, which is a predatory mite company in the UK. They very kindly sent me some to try out for you guys and show you what's up. This isn't an ad, but they did send them to me for free, but I have since bought more with my own money. I do have a discount code, so if you're interested in giving predatory mites a try, or if you already use them and you want a discount code, use code GOODGROWING10 for 10% off your order. So far, I've had a pretty good experience with the predatory mites. I started using them in January when I got back from my holiday. I did have a little bit of pest problems. I was noticing spider mites and thrips on some of my plants especially some in the cabinet, which is, as you know, is where I keep all my favorite plants. So I was 
wanting to try something else out, try something different, and I was recommended Dragonfly LTD as a great source for predatory mites. And so they sent me a bunch of little sachets to put around my collection, and I slowly watched as little tiny predatory mites crawled out of the little hole and climbed all over my plants and started eating up the bad stuff. So I was kind of using it in a curative way at the beginning, but now I think I'm gonna continue using it as preventative because why not? Especially in my IKEA cabinet, just because it is an enclosed space, so it is quite an easy place to keep them regularly. On the collection outside of the cabinet, I think I probably will still use chemical pesticides personally, but in the cabinet, it's just the perfect solution because it is all contained. But after a few days, you'll notice the predatory mites crawling around on your plants in quite large numbers. It's kind of like hordes of predatory mites just like flocking throughout the plant. And you'll see they concentrate in some areas, which might actually be areas where there's like pest eggs or larvae or something. So yeah, I think it's worked really well. I've definitely stopped seeing as many pests in the cabinet since I started using them. It's been like two and a half months now, and I've not really had any big issues in the cabinet, which is great because there were thrips in there before. <laughs> and I don't think there are now, which is brilliant. I think it's about time for me to replace these ones as well. So I'll just get another pack of like five. Put them in and let them do their work and sort of prevent future outbreaks of pests. And that's good because like things always change and I change what's in here and I like get new plants and I put them in here, which I probably shouldn't. I should probably quarantine those um, to be safe. Anyways, that's a me problem. <laughs> but yeah, I found that they work really well and I'm really happy using them. I know this set kind of does sound like an ad. Um, they did gift me the first set, but I have been buying them with my own money since because I do like them. I think they are a decent way to prevent outbreaks of pests on my plants, which is like what the houseplant owner doesn't want that. So yeah, I really like them and I'm gonna continue using them. So that is it. That is what you need to know about predatory mites and how to use them to prevent and cure pest infestations on your houseplants. If you're interested in trying them out for yourself, head to the link in the description. I will link Dragonfly LCD down below and don't forget to use code GOODGROWING10 for a discount on your order. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!